Hey everyone. Now, as you know, I recently uh, published a song and I thought I'd make a video and show you how I put that song together. Um, I did it all by myself here at home with nothing special. Um, so I just want to show you the process that I went through. Now, the main part of that song is uh, the piano because this is my uh, main instrument really. So it sits here in the middle of the house and I just play it all the time. So it started off with just mucking around with a 12 bar blues kind of progression, which is just C, F, and G. They're the only three chords in the song. So, you know, I just randomly add twiddly bits as I go along. So I built on that to create the structure of a song, which is a standard sort of chord progression for 12 bar blues. Now to record the whole thing, I used Reaper. Um, and I did everything in Linux, by the way. So Reaper runs on Linux, so I just did that. And by the time I got to recording the piano, I had already recorded a bunch of other instruments like the drums, um, percussion, bass, um, the electric keyboard. And I just had it running out here on the screen. And I just had the four tracks queued up for my piano for the four microphones that I used. So that was recording out here when I was playing the piano. But when I actually did the recording itself, all I could hear was a metronome. I had no other instruments playing in the background. So to record, I used two sound cards set up as one virtual device, and that's easy in Linux. I was using a Raspberry Pi before around the drum kit, but out here, where the piano is, I've got this computer anyway, so I just did the same thing on there to record it. Now actually recording the piano is a nightmare because, as you can probably hear from my voice in this room, it's very echoey. There's nothing but flat surfaces everywhere. But um, the piano wasn't going to move anywhere, so I had to make do with what I had. So the way I set those four microphones up, um, I had a left and a right here essentially to give me some stereo about it. So just one over the left end of the piano, one over the right end. For the other two microphones, I had them down the back. I used my best microphone right here, centrally just above the piano overall, so I could catch the best piano sound I could. And in the mix, that's panned straight on the mono and I, the other two left and right that I just mentioned are slightly less volume just to give the stereo effect. And the last microphone I just had down over the bass strings here because it seemed to be lacking a bit of bass from the other microphones. So I've just got this here and I've just put a bit of equalizer on it to um, just be bass and bring the bass up a little bit. On the laptop I had the same file open but I just soloed the uh, metronome track so I could just hear a click coming from the uh, headphones. So I just had this Bluetooth to the laptop so I could hear that click and play to that. And meanwhile, of course, the actual recording computer was recording the microphones. To film it, I had four cameras as well. The main one that I'm looking at now is the one I film all my stuff generally with. And that's just a, a Sony camcorder on a tripod on a coffee stand stuck way up there so I could try and capture an overall shot of the piano and me. But I had another three cameras. So when I came to record it, I had to run around, start four cameras, start recording on that, press play on the metronome, get in position and start playing. And I did a lot of takes on that before I finally got the version I was happy with. So there was a bit of running around involved. This camera here is to capture the hammers as they move. So as I'm playing, that always tends to look you know, pretty cool. But the problem was most of the twiddly stuff that I play was, was up here which is kind of hidden, so that didn't work out as well as I'd hoped. But that was the theory behind that camera. Now at the top of the keyboard, I just set a GoPro there, um, just right on the edge between the black keys and the white keys. So it theoretically would see the fingers as I'm sort of doing, doing that sort of stuff. But um, I actually forgot to press record for the first half of it. Um, that's why there's no twiddly fingers on the first piano part of the song. These things happen. And I just had that camera there facing me so you could see that's actually me playing just for the hell of it. Now I did many takes of the piano and it was just hours and hours of piano playing. And after a while, my fingers started getting a bit, um, bit tender, um, especially on the side of my thumbs from all the, those twiddly bits. If I did that now, that would hurt when usually I can get a few out, but after a while it takes its toll. So if you notice in the video, if you look carefully, I actually had band-aids on this finger and that thumb and this shit on the keys here I've got to clean off. That's some glue from the band-aids as I was playing it. But you do these things. And the reason you do these things is because it doesn't always go according to plan. Now this piano is actually out of tune. If you hear some of the notes here, like, they sound a bit rough. 
Ooh, especially that one. The thing is, for this style of song, that's not really a problem. I mean, it's not too badly out of tune, um, and it does suit the song. Now, normally, if I'm recording something that's not that style, just something where I want the piano absolutely perfect, I'll use the electric one, because that obviously never goes out of tune. But I wanted this to be authentic, and obviously I wanted to film the piano as, as well, me playing it. Um, so that's what I did. And uh, I think it worked out all right, even though I had to do a million takes, because, you know, hit one wrong note, there's no MIDI fix up, I just have to do it again. So that's what I did. So that's the piano. And when I actually started the music for this, it started as just a bit of fun with a tracker program. Now, if you know what trackers are, it's, it's basically a sequencer that has a bunch of samples and it just plays them at different rates to get the different pitch for a note. Um, so I started doing that sort of thing with an Amiga. We're using Pro Tracker, then I went to Scream Tracker, and now with Milky Tracker. So this is just quickly how it started. So you can see the samples here. I've got a bunch of samples and it's very rough. Same snare. And I was just mucking around with... Turn that down. I was just mucking around with a... Um, let's call it a funky kind of bass. And, and from there, and then I threw a few pianos in there. You get the idea. Now, the Amiga only had four channels of sound, but um, these days you can do heaps. So, that's how this thing started. It's very rough. Anyway, obviously I played the real instruments later. Um, but those, those tracker programs are just handy for getting an idea down. So I'll show Reaper and show you how I put the song together. All right, so here's Reaper, and here's all the tracks that I, that I put together. As you can see, there's a few of them, 53 apparently, even though a couple of those are folders. So I'll just expand them out a little bit and go through what I've got. I've got my MIDI controller here for the volume, so you can see the, the levels there changing as I move these. It just makes it a bit easier. But keep in mind, I'm a network engineer, not an audio engineer, as that shows. So the first one is a click. So just so I can hear a click coming through. And as I said, when I played the piano, that's all I could hear when I was playing the piano part. But anyway, there's the click. And so next is the drums. Now I started off with, with the drums because once you've got a beat, you can play the rest of the instruments, but it wasn't that good. So I, I did the drums initially and then did all the other instruments and then I redid the drums last, I think. Down here at the bass drum, I've got, um, I don't have a hole in it. Normally you'd shove a microphone in there, but it's all sealed. So the best I could do is stick the microphone here. And uh, you can see it's held together by tape. So much of this setup's held together by tape. So that's the bass drum microphone there. On the snare, I just have one above it there. As I said, that ended up just being a trigger for the MIDI note. But there's my uh, snare drum microphone. And up the top, I've got these two overheads. And I, I panned them just left and right, similar to what I did on the piano to give it a stereo sound and mainly above each main symbol here. So what I did then, I, I got rid of that whole idea because I could not get that bass drum sound at any good really. So I got rid of all of those effects, I've just unticked them, and I have this audio to MIDI trigger. So that says once I uh, pass a certain threshold, it triggers a MIDI note. And then I pass that MIDI trigger to a sample. So now it sounds like the bass drum that you heard. So that's a, uh, a sample over and over, but it's still triggered by my performance. So while I was in that mood, I did the same for the snare drum. So that's the snare drum I ended up with. Even though the snare drum initially wasn't terrible. After I mucked around with it, it was gonna sound like this. That's a bit rough. But, um, So there's my, uh, my drums. Now the reason I've got a lot of cutouts here, you can see I've done some editing of the times of these. It wasn't because I was bad at drums. I'm, I'm pretty all right at drums. The problem was when I recorded the, the drums here, I had come from recording the piano and all my levels on the sound card inputs, I, I didn't really adjust them right for the drums and there was a lot distorted. You can see these snare drums here, they're full on distorted. If, if you look at that, it's way clipped, right? So by doing those, samples, I thought, oh, I won't, man, I'm just using samples, but it was triggering the samples twice for like one of my hits because it was still at a high amplitude. So that's why I had to cut a lot of things up and, um, and just trim, well, that's basically what I did. I cut them up so it only had the sound in that area. I also automated a bit of volume here for them. So those drums towards the end, just to try and make it sound different because it is an artificial sound because it's just a sample, but I did what I could.
So the overhead ones, the two overhead mics, they're not bad. They've got really no effect on them. Have I got any effects? Oh, I put maybe a little bit of treble. Ah, yes, and the volume. Because if you have a look, if I just, I'll just expand well, everything. Where's the overheads? You can see the overheads for the left are way bigger than the overheads for the right. Again, I had my levels all over the place. So what I did for the one on the right, I, um, I just boosted its volume by 18 dB and a bit on the left. Anyway, they sound all right. I think that they, they sounded all right just in, um, just naturally. And then once they go with the others, you get the drums. And that's my drum kit. Now I have an electric drum kit as well, and I much prefer to play the real drums, but the electric drums do have a, have a use, and that is I can play them in the middle of the night and record them in the middle of the night um, just with headphones and a cable connected to the computer. So I don't like the sound of them, but they had a use because what I did, that's the electric drum kit. And uh, the use was I could record a track so I could at least play the other instruments in the middle of the night, like the, um, the bass guitar or the electric keyboard there. Um, so that's all I used that for was just as a, as a track initially before I was ready to record the actual drums. So in the mix, that's, that's muted, so nothing special about that. These are the drums that the neighbours hear. And this is how the drums ended up sounding. Next is the percussion. So you can see me on the tambourine in there. That was handy because that just adds a bit of fill um, in between the drum hits. So it, it makes the percussion sound a bit louder, even though it's just a little simple tra um, trampoline, tambourine. So that's the tambourine. I did loop that to make them all identical. So I cheated there, fixed the timing and got them just repeated. So that's that. Um, clapping, we clap. I, uh, let's have a look. You see I've got some claps going on here. I did three takes of that, um, just clapping away in the uh, recording room there. And what I did was I edited them so that they're offset a little bit. So if I zoom in, I start one track just a little bit before the time, one on time and one a little bit late. And those three together, Oh, and I also panned them slightly different. So one is panned a little bit to the left, one's in the center, and one's to the right. So it sounds a bit more full, you know, with the tambourine. There's my backing percussion that goes with the drums. Just makes it sound more full. Next is the triangle for percussion, which I might not think there's much in this, but there is. That in itself had a little bit of technique as well. So I'll jump to the electric keyboard uh, and then come back to the triangle. So for the electric piano, in that bit in the middle. That was me just playing the soft part and um, I was playing it naturally without being exactly on time. It was just, I was trying to get a bit of feel out of it. And because of that, my triangle playing was a little bit off because the triangle, I think, was played on time perfectly. So <laughs> it won't have been. So what I did, I went through and I got the piano here, the electric piano, and um, the triangle, where are we? And I just lined up the notes to hit where they should on the piano. So the piano was there, so I lined that one up there. So really I cheated with all of this. Uh, that one there, lined it up there. That one there, lined it up there. So together, it's, they're, they're in sync with each other. Because that was way off before and it sounded horrible. So I fixed that up. Now with the triangle, I discovered, because I'm sure you care about this, my triangle experience taught me that um, you don't hit it on the open end here, hit it on the one that's solid. It just seemed to be more consistent in its sound and just hold it in a way that I can sort of cut the note off. So, like that. That was my triangle. Again, it just added a bit of something to the song, so I put it in there. Okay, ah, uh, the bass. I can't play bass. I love the bass, but I can't play one really. Not fast anyway. So this is the bass that I played, but as you can see, it's got this word rate on here, rate 1.47. That's what I sped it up by. So when I actually played it, 
I played it at 85 beats a minute instead of 125, which is what the song is. So I played it really slowly to make sure I could get the notes in time because, again, I'm not a bass player. So here's how it actually sounded when I played it. So there you go. I sped that up as well. And there's lots of, um, wherever you see these red lines, that's just chunks of samples that I've had to adjust for the timing. So I sped that up, and if you look at the video, you can see it doesn't look quite natural because that's sped up as well. Um, but here it is, just uh, completed, sounds okay. Well, it's good as I'm gonna make it sound anyway, just so I could get all the notes, get them in time, and have a bass line. So anyway, that's the bass. Now we're at the piano. So I just showed you how I set up the piano. Those two mics for left and right are just one and two. And um, I took a bit of bass off them because I just wanted them for the real stereo sound. And the main one is the third mic, which still doesn't sound fantastic. Like, it's hard to record, especially out there. And a bit of a bassy one down there. Okay, and all together, um, when I find it, Piano. Um, minimal effects. Uh, I don't think, what did I do? Oh yeah, just the equaliser that I boosted the top end of for those two. And overall, no, there's no effects. So other than a little bit of EQ on a couple of the microphones, the, there's no effects. It's just, there's no reverb or anything like that. It's just me playing the piano. And that was, of course, that was in real time and, um, and live a lot of times. Okay, electric piano I've done, extras. Now, I had a couple little sounds which you may have heard. Let's get rid of the piano. You may have heard the cat. I just, I just had it start off on the left, go to the right, and then add some delay on the right as though it's an echo like it's running away. That was the cat. And I had another sample from another song when I said a certain part, but I asked them if I could use it and they never got back to me. So to be totally legit, I just left it out. But you can imagine what that was. So there's that one there. And now I'm onto the guitar. Well, so this is another instrument I don't play. Uh, so what I did, I just practiced the few notes that I was gonna play. I just practiced that a few times and just had it recording in case I got it right. And I ended up getting a, a decent enough version. So here's how it sounds without any effects. And there's no chopping up the notes there, that's just how I played it. Now the So for the effects, um, the tune was just to tune it up initially, and then I unticked that. Bit of compression using this guitar solo, because that's what it was. Um, bit of delay, because that's what you do. Um, some distortion, and then this convolution amp cab modeler. So I'll go through each one as I, as I play it. Okay, some bit of compression there. And delay. And distortion, and finally. That last one adds to it. And I don't mind how it ended up sounding. So keep in mind, that initially sounded like... Just nothing special. It sounds alright through some effects. So that's all, just a little bit of guitar. I felt the song needed. So that's that. Now the trumpets. Now these, this is my favourite part of the song, these trumpets. Uh, even though they were a bit messy too. So what I did, you can see there's a whole bunch of them. Let's just go with one. What I did, I did the same note uh, twice. And then I moved on to a different note of the chord. And did that twice, and then did a low one. All twice, which ended up with a nice full sound. And again, I did the panning all over the place um, 
I did put some thought into it. So you can see there's various lefts and rights for the different notes for the panning over here to get that, that wide sound, so it sounds a bit full. Individually, you can see here I've got a lot of red stuff here because what I was doing was, if you look at the, the sample where it normally was, you see this note, I started there and I sort of wanted them to end here, but some dragged on longer than others, like this one might have been somewhere else. So this note finished here, this one finished over there. So what I did, I just split that, moved that back so it ends right at the same place, and this is just an audio mix in the middle there, so it blends in. And same with this. So that gives me, gives me the ending the same. Uh, they do have some effect on them, and the main one being the tuning, because I played it a bit wobbly. Right, so what I've done is a bit of tuning. So if I look at that first one only, and play it, you can see how it's varying the tuning here, because I was playing it a bit rough. Without that tuning, here it's all over the place. So I cheated there. And the limiter, I just made it so it's loud. Because it's, it's just a, a raw sounding instrument, it doesn't have to be delicate, so I just cranked it up so it hits a certain level. And the reason I did that individually, I did the same effects on all these trumpet tracks, was because if I did it overall for the trumpet sound, for the limiter, it would have varied left and right between the different trumpet sounds, and I wanted it to be equal. So I just did that there, and I think I just put like delay overall. Yeah, a bit of delay and reverb overall. So that's how I ended up with that trumpet. Next is the chorus, which same sort of thing. I just did a whole bunch of um, takes with different chordal notes, so what do you do? I did I did three of those, they're all the same. What do you do? And then three with What do you do? And three of What do you do? All together to get What do you do? Just a bit of a, a backing chorus there. What do you do? And held a long note. Do. That's that. Uh, oh, because it hurts. Same sort of thing. Because it hurts! <laughs> the girly voice. Ah, the voices. So we're at the voice now. Um, the main vocal, just me me singing away. Ten dollar whore! Yep. So, where am I starting this thing? So, where that starts... Breakfast, I made your dinner too. Couple of and effects. when we went out... I paid for all the Pistol food, off. I gave you comfort. So compressed a little I bit there to stop to my um, high volume notes there. You can see um, it just re reduces automatically if I get a bit loud. What do you do for me? The ESA, because everyone said do. I entertained you. <laughs> I sang a bit of EQ, a bit of bass there. I played my piano. I did my I dance for I you. Use that. Why you just sat there and you just looked at me. A bit of delay. I didn't use reverb because like I didn't want that long holding reverby warm sound. I wanted a, a raw thing. So I just used a bit of delay. And I did limit it just to maximize the volume. And when we went out, I paid for all the food. So that's that. But the other voice in the middle was my, my lower voice. You'll hear this one's different. Now you're a boiler and you sleep with even, your Even cat. with no effect, I tell you, baby, I'm too bit quiet, but that. it's a lot deeper than my normal voice. Me, but you wanna be and the way I did that was I recorded it first thing in the morning. So in the morning, I've got a deeper voice and I wanted a deeper voice for that bit. So I just came in here first now in the morning. Now you're a boiler and you sleep with your cat. Yeah, as well with cat I tell in the you, baby, I'm that recording room is just a walk-in wardrobe that I've put all this... Um, sound absorbing stuff here, or sound dead enough, I should say. And you can probably hear when I walked in then that the sound changed. So that's just what I use. And I use it to record instruments that can fit in here, like the trumpet or the triangle tambourine, still here. So I just use it to record simple things like that, and of course voice. So that's how I put the song together. It was just um, a lot of takes on, on various things, and just, just the time really of, of just piecing it together bit by bit. But as it comes together, you know, Goes, all right. so, I'm pretty happy with that. Right. A bit of muck around fun there. Now the microphone holder broke, so I just had to have the microphone hanging down here, tied for a bugle just to sort of keep it in the air there. 
Um, I didn't use the pop filter, which I'd normally have for the B's and P's, but it was a bit rough, so everything's held together by bits around here. Actually, it's like that. I've got the microphone just dangling there. I've got the bass drum microphone held to the stand with tape. I've got holes through my electric drums, and I've got a trumpet held together by tape as well. Those of you who've been watching these videos a while might remember the trumpet repair video that didn't go so well. But anyway, it works. Everything works, so I just managed to patch it all together. And when I uploaded the video, I got a copyright hit uh, from YouTube, okay? Uh, initially, I uploaded a version, the same version, for, um, to try and get permission for that sample I was going to use that they never got back to me on. And then I took that down and I put the uploaded version that you all saw and that got a, a copyright hit from a different song, even though it was the same song I uploaded. So I just had a different opinion on that day. Anyway, it said I cop copied the structure when really the 12 bar chord progression is pretty standard. It's not like I copied any song. So um, it's certainly an original song. Uh, so anyway, I had to do that. So this is what came in. Your video, blah, 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 has got something that's licensed by someone else, blah, blah, blah. And you can dispute it. So I disputed it and it came back. Hey, good news, we've, we've checked it out and apparently it's okay, so you can earn money. <laughs> Not that I'm earning real money from it, but um, I just wanted to clear that up before I actually published it. So that was there for a few days in limbo. And so far it's made two bucks. So it's not exactly raking it in. But the funny thing was when I looked, <laughs> when I first uploaded it, subscribers was negative one. <laughs> I have an idea who that might be. <laughs> but anyway, that's the song, that's uploaded. And I just thought I'd show you how I put a song together, how it started with um, Milky Tracker and then progressed into actually playing some instruments and recording the whole thing. So anyway, it was all done with Linux and a Raspberry Pi for the, uh, the microphones on the drum kit there. So you can do all this stuff yourself, maybe. Um, I did. So give it a go. You don't need Windows or anything else like that. Reaper you can download and use for free. Like I've paid for it, but... Um, you can use it for free and it's not limited in any way, so you can try Reaper and see how you go. Anyway, that'll do for now. Till next time, take it easy.